Good morning. It's an absolutely lovely day here in Melbourne. Brilliant sunshine. Now, many of you who have watched my videos on making moulds will have seen that I use a very fine facing sand on top of the pattern in order to produce uh, the nicest possible surface finish. I've been asked where I get this sand from. Well, I don't get it from anywhere. I actually make it. And this is the machine I make it in. Basically, it's a grinding mill. Uh, we have an electric motor, a big blue thing at one end. It's the only new bit that I actually bought. The rest of it's made out of old junk and rubbish that I had lying around. Uh, and it's connected via a belt drive to a uh, spindle that's got a disc on top of it. Now, if I put the camera down a bit, there, that should do it. <coughs> The disc is here and it does about 500 RPM, oh no, sorry, about 600 RPM. It's a sanding disc basically. I made about six of these some years ago and instead of having a, a abrasive paper on it, um, it has two thicknesses of a cutoff wheel, a uh, nine inch cutoff wheel. Now, on top of that, I set this device, which is an old grindstone, a steel band around it. Uh, and it sits on these three bolts. There are three nuts there to just hold this up. And so I can adjust it up. Got to line it up exactly to get it on. It's a pain. It really is a pain. Here we go. Now that sits just above that rotating disc. And this bit sits up on top. And I simply pour the sand that I want to turn into my facing sand in the top and I grind it very finely. All right, well, I'll now take this machine outside, set it up and start grinding. It's a messy, dirty, nasty business. There's a lot, very lot of dust and so one has to do it outside. Okay, I've now got the machine outside and going. You'll notice I've got it all covered up with bits of rag. This is to try and stop dust, but it's not very successful. Um, I feed the machine with two different types of sand. Firstly, we have this stuff here. This is brand new moulding sand, straight out of the ground. But I've dried it, crushed it, and passed it through a sieve that's got about one and a quarter mil opening, just to get rid of the coarse lumps of rubbish that happened to be in the sand and, and I mean there's a bucket that shows some of the coarse pieces that came out there they're, they're largely little granite little coarse pebbles and you don't want those in the sand and they're a bit hard to grind up the other material I use is this this is used sand it's been uh, again dried and passed through a finer sieve about a half mil opening on the sieve and I do that, I use the finest sieve there to get rid of small pieces of metal because they're very destructive on the grinding disc here. I simply add the two of them uh, one at a time to the hopper at the top, alternating. And as you can see, if you watch, you'll see it, it goes down, but ever so slowly. To fill two of these barrels, they're 250 litre barrels, takes about two days so I've got a lot of work cut out but as you can see the weather's not bad here at the moment and it's a reasonably pleasant day it's about 20 degrees C I suppose very nice well finally after many days of grinding we now have two full barrels of fine sand you'll notice it's you see it's very fine it's almost flour it feels like that is actually quite a lot of very fine sand in mixed, mixed in with it and by the time it's mixed up with water it'll be fine but it's been a dusty dirty few days doing this fortunately I only have to do it every couple of years now that we have our sand ground we need to temper it with water so that we can actually use it to make a mould first because I'm a bit fussy with this facing sand I like to sweep the bench down to get rid of any little bits of rubbish that might have accumulated. Wet the bench. Some people often ask how much water should they add to their sand. Unfortunately there is no 
certain and sure answer to that. Different sands require different water. This sand, for example, is a, a natural sand, and as such, it's got a quite a high clay level, and that means it will require quite a lot of water. Other sands, like a synthetic, you might make yourself with bentonite and uh, washed silica sand. You wouldn't use as much bentonite as this has clay, as this sand has clay in it. This probably has nearly 15 to 20 percent. Um, and you'd never use that much bentonite in the sand, it's way too strong. Um, so your bentonite sand is going to require probably quite a lot less water. Oh. This is quite a fine sieve. It's uh, about half a millimetre gaps, maybe a bit more. All right. Even though the sand's just been ground, it's surprising how many little bits of stuff it seems to pick up. This just gets rid of those two. Oh, come on. Shake through. The other thing about sands, of course, is that as they get older, they need less water because some of the clay burns out. Now, at this stage, a small amount of corn flour is a handy expansion defect additive. Wood flour is the more traditional, but I don't happen to have any of that. I must buy some one day. Uh, normal wheat flour doesn't seem to work as well. It produces a, a somewhat unpleasant surface on the castings. Right, now the water. I was at it with a fine spray. Progressively, slowly. It'd be nice if I had a sand mover to do this with, but I don't. I've often contemplated building one, but the older I get, the less likely I am to build it, and I wouldn't get the use out of it. A lot of work in building one of those. We'll do it for a start. So all I do is just push it around with the rake. Now, note how the sand's reacting to the rake. At the moment, it's going through very easily. This is one of the ways you can tell when you add, add how much water you've got in the sand when you're getting close, by how it reacts with the rope. Also, note the volume of the sand. As more and more water goes in, the sand bulks up, and that becomes quite obvious later. That too you can use as a guide to tell you when you've, you've got something like enough water in the sand. I wouldn't be too fussy about, wouldn't be too worried though about getting the water exactly right. Uh, as long as you've got enough moisture in there so the sand hangs together when you ram it, and not so much that it, it's like mud, you should be right. I mean, you'll learn by experience and by making castings, making moulds, whether you've got it really right or not. Dry sand tends to make brittle moulds. You get a lot of edge loss when you pull the pattern out. The bits of the mould will break away when you try and wrap the pattern to loosen it. But it will give you quite a good surface in it. Wet sand's much tougher. You can wrap the pattern a lot more and you won't break the edges away. But the surface finish will be nowhere near as good. Sand, you'll notice, is still going through the rake quite well. It's a little bit different. It's starting to pile up on the rake, but it's still going through very easily at this stage. Always when the edges seem to get wetter than the middle, so poke them in here. See, it is. The way it's raking is changing. And also, the sand's increasing in volume. I can see it. I don't know whether you can on the camera, but I sure can here. Nowhere near enough yet. This isn't really a very good way of mixing the sand. <coughs> you 
come to that pretty uneven. It makes it a little hard to judge. But starting to get reasonably close for this amount of sand, I would think. Yeah. The sand's beginning to pile up more on the rake as it goes through. The bed, goes through. Way too dry. This stage, I'll just <coughs> put some in the middle here. The edges are probably reasonably wet. Now that sounds, to me anyway, to my eyes, it's quite a bit bigger in volume than it was. It's still a bit dry in the middle there, but quite wet there. Huh? Alright, that's half the sand we need. I'll quickly add a little bit more. Alright, now more water. I also know by past experience that that amount of sand will take a little bit over half of this bucket of water. But, uh, it's just because I've done this, this same mix many times before. Now the sand you'll notice is, is quite, it's bulked up a lot. You know, it's, it's, it seems to be a lot thicker on the bench. Because clays swell when they get wet, particularly bed, right? That's well known for it. But even this clay, which is, I don't know what it is, it's just some natural clay that occurs in the sand. Um, even that swells. That's starting to get close. Very uneven. We'll shovel it into a pile in the middle and rake it out again and then see what we've got. There's a lot of dry underneath. quantities of sand, like my stacking sand, if I ever have to mix up a new lot of that, I won't do it on the bench, I'll do it on the floor because there's a lot more of it, but it's just easier to do it up there. Shuffle it around a bit, just a little, to uncover any real dry stuff down, down the bottom of it. Yeah, let's have a bit. rub it together a bit. It, it still feels a bit dry to me. I think that's about done. That's what I can do it. Now you see it's it's not going through the rake as much. It's sort of pushing on mass with the rake. <coughs> it's sort of more moving in bulk rather than flowing. That's that's very close to right. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's good now. So I can sort of tell by feeling it. Unfortunately, I can't feel through a camera. Bit of a pity. <coughs> Keep it. At this stage, I'll add what's left over from the last brew I mixed. <coughs> this is the machine I use to break the sand up. It aerates it, mixes it, stirs it. To some extent it probably substitutes for a muller because it, it does stir the sand around and it does rub the sand against itself quite a lot. Half horsepower motor, 1500 RPM. Down here 
on a uh, on the end of the shaft there are eight rods that stick out radially and there are another eight just down a bit lower here uh, those obviously rotate with the shaft and the sand's got to pass through those there are six stationary rods mounted around at this level so the sand has to go through eight moving rods, six stationary and eight moving and this makes certain it's, it's well uh, beaten up. So we'll catch it in a bag for this stuff. <laughs> well, we try to. <laughs> now we just slowly feed the sand through. It's also possible to tell by how quickly or slowly the sand goes through this, whether it's dry or wet. The dry sand will fall through very quickly. The wet sand is much slower, and in fact, it's wet enough to clog the machine. Mm, yeah, it might be a little on the wet side as well. The last one. Now that we've pushed the sand through the machine, let's see what we've got. The easiest way for me to do that is just to put a bit in the sieve and sieve it. Just to see how easy it goes through the sieve. That's pretty good. Dry sand would fall through the sieve much quicker than this. Wet sand, I'd have to really struggle to push it through. It's a fine sieve, as you can see, it's 55 thou, hole size. Um, remember that if you're using a coarser sieve than that it'll go through easier anyway you've got to sort of get to know your sieves and your sand to get the feel for this the other trick when you sieve it it falls fairly flat on the bench a bit of a dome a bit of a mound there but not too much if it was dry it would sort of be very flat if it was very wet you'd see holes sort of through the sand because it won't sit down flat it just sort of sticks where it lands um, but that's that's pretty good I'm, I'm very happy with that sand that'll make a nice bag now I might add that if I was doing a job where I wanted a very good finish I would deliberately run the sand a bit dry if I was doing a job where I need sand that's tougher uh, I would deliberately run it a bit wetter now, I will put that, leave that in the bag and in a couple of hours I'll process it through the machine again and uh, after that I'll be able to use it. I suppose before I put it away and wait for the couple of hours I should do the obligatory test that you see everyone do where they grab a handful of sand and they squeeze it and then they tell you that if sand sticks to your hand like that, the sand's too wet. That's rubbish. It sticks to your hand even when it's almost bone dry. So you can forget that test. And then they say that if you break it, it should break with minimal dribbling. Well, that's true in this case. That tells me it's not too dry. The fact that it's a fairly clean, even break tells me that it's probably reasonably well mixed. Try again here. See, there's a little bit of dribbling on that, a little bit of breakaway there, but not very much. It's a reasonable break. I personally don't use that test much. It, I think it's a bit meaningless. To me, it's just the way the sand feels when you get your hands on it. You know, it just feels all right. I guess that's born of experience and something you'll just have to learn, I'm afraid. Back in the bag.